Good morning, folks. Today we've got a great slate of science to slide through and a look ahead as well. We'll also see the deadly weather from last night as we begin with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. The sun has some small active regions, small coronal holes, general unease within the corona, but no big solar flares or eruptions of filaments. There was a brief rise in the X-ray readings as the sunspot group on the north exploded into growth phase, just in time to get the heck off the Earth facing half of the sun. We did have some solar wind fluctuations. The core portion of the coronal hole stream arrived at Earth and drove more intense streams, coupling and putting pressure on Earth's magnetic field, and we did get a brief geomagnetic storm yesterday afternoon. Red bar at the bottom. It is waning back now. We are pulling the radar next with lightning overlay from last night. The convergence line bringing strong storms ripped through Alabama a bit after sunset and dropped either a tornado or a serious microburst on Birmingham and the surrounding area. At least one has died, and the damage in the hard-hit area is extensive. Let's ease into our science news today with a newly discovered planetary system that gives TRAPPIST-1 a run for its money. Although it's only got six planets compared to the seven in TRAPPIST, these are in resonance, which means that somehow every few orbits, the planets align. If we're not supposed to wonder if symbols of an alien sky and the similar align planet stories from antiquity merely represented an earlier epoch of our solar system, I'm not sure what we're supposed to do. By the way, this crashes planet formation theory and before Shoal Star Red Binary came through our system 72,000 years ago, maybe this is what our solar system did. In any case, in this other system they have interior rocky planets, gas planets on the outside just like we do. Let's go from a wow to a told you so. As dark matter collapses as a paradigm, we continue to see identification of the critical predictions of plasma cosmology. Yesterday it was that violation of frozen and magnetic field lines, and today it's the existence of a large-scale, magnetized structure. While finding what we expect, exactly where it's expected, it simultaneously crushed dark matter model expectations. It's a magnetic cosmos threaded by the flow of material, currents. Now I'd like to think I raised the astrophysics good and proper, but Dr. Pierre-Marie Robitaille does it better, and that goes for his small-scale examination of the stars as well. His latest examines the only star I know of more interesting than the Methuselah star they think is older than the Big Bang. It's got super heavy elements on it, and the only explanations in mainstream science are never-before-seen, completely theoretical physics that don't exactly make sense, or an alien fuel dump. Yeah, the last few videos over at Sky Scholar Channel are hard to put down. We're coming down next to Earth, and we've got a quick note on two papers out on geomagnetic effects on satellites, which ends up affecting comms, GPS, and a psychotic number of other things you wouldn't think require satellites, help set patterns in the biological correlations, too, discovered with these solar events and which are now being investigated beyond just the peripheral level. From the lab results we've seen to the mathematical patterns today, we are electrically connected to the atmosphere, the Earth, the magnetic field, the interplanetary magnetic field, and right back to the sun. On the geomagnetic front, we've seen a lot on the whales recently. We shared the older paper on how they statistically beach more often during geomagnetic storms. NASA has been on this hard for a number of years. We've showed why the weakening magnetic field of Earth is equally concerning in this manner, and now we find hard evidence beyond the math and correlations. We're only a few studies away now from a floodgate opening into how whales interact and use Earth's magnetism. Well, folks, let's go ahead and address the big climate story of the week. I knew it was coming, and it is the reason I put out that special video last week, so I hope you remember it. Indeed, they are noticing accelerations of the ice loss, especially at the north. It's true. It has more to do with Earth's weakening magnetic field and enhanced geoelectric system, but we'll come back to that. In our special video, we showed how three top-tier journals have all come to the same conclusion within one year, that melting the polar ice is what triggers an ice age. That was articles from Geology, Science, and Nature. And now the only escape today's scientists have from expressing this future is that they say now is different. Now the few parts per million in the atmosphere will overpower the oceans and heat transport breakdown and everything else, our carbon pollution. But the other part of that video last week was that those models are complete garbage. Nature and the AGU have both identified that when stacked up against the past, while the melting ice theory works, the carbon climate control does not. It breaks down, and they identify the CO2 bias, the oversensitivity to carbon in the models, 
as being the problem. And without that improper overburdening of that element in climate models, you don't get to say it prevents the ice melt from triggering the ice age anymore. And you just sit and hope that the record low volcanic cooling on this planet the last century or so doesn't end and trigger the ice age even sooner. What's the best way to support this community right now? Besides fighting the censorship algorithms and sharing these breadcrumbs, it's making a new home for the community. Canceling the conference last year due to COVID-1984 was nearly the ax. We can't take that risk again, and we've designed this with you in mind. ObserverRanch.com, click Make It Happen, and truly, we greatly appreciate your support. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.